human connection, building relationships, win-win relationships, is the key to success. And it's amazing when you start talking to people what actually happens. And we are born and bred to have that human connection. How many of you struggled during the pandemic when you couldn't speak to your friends, your family, in the physical world? Put your hands up. I know I did, massively, because I'm a human connector. So for me, the pandemic was a struggle. But obviously now we've come out of the pandemic and it's even more important today that we have that human connection. I grew up for the first 12 years of my life in a bungalow in Cardiff with my mum and dad. My mum was a secretary, my father was a policeman, yes. And basically, I wanted a brother or sister because I loved being around people. I wanted somebody to play with, to talk to, because I was a talkative little thing. But it wasn't meant to be, because my mum, bless her, she had a slip disc when I was born. So she couldn't actually have any more children. And the osteopaths used to say to her, no more. So she always wished that she had more children, because every time in the summer holidays, I'd be in the car, my father would pick my mother up from his, her uh, shift when she finished work, and there was a car full of kids. And she used to say, oh my God, I wish I had more kids because I've always got a car full anyway, or a house full, but that's okay. But when I was 12 years of age, my mum and dad went into the pub trade. So guess what? I used to come down into my living room, and it was a pub full of people. Hallelujah, I absolutely love that because I love people, right? So having grown up in the pub trade, that gave me, I suppose that planted the seed that I wanted to work with people. So I started to do glass collecting. Don't tell the police, I was 13 years of age. I started working behind the bar when I was 14, I think, and I absolutely loved it. So I knew that I was gonna work in the people industry. So let me take you back. When I left school, I started working for a, uh, a finance house as a clerk, doing administration, and I hated it with a passion because I loved to talk. So I thought, what can I do that's going to serve me and that's going to motivate me to get up out of bed every day? Do you get that feeling sometimes? You're not sure what to do, but what's going to motivate you? So I decided to go into sales, and I started working for the local newspaper and I absolutely loved it. And I built, built a great team. But in 2007, I'm going to take you back. I started working for a company. And at the time, my boss said to me, I want you to go out networking. I said, networking? What's all that about? And he said, you go to these business events, you swap your business cards, and you do business. I thought, that's easy. I can do that. I can do that, not a problem at all. Being in the pub trade, speaking to people, brilliant. So off to my first event I went, and I think, Bernie, you were there. And basically, I'm gonna let you into a little secret. I was absolutely useless at networking because I was primarily a sales girl. I got taught how to sell, but as part of the sales process, they never taught me how to network. So I was rubbish. So the first three months, I got zero business from networking. And I thought to myself, this networking lark is rubbish. Or am I doing something wrong? And when you're in business, whether you're in business or working for a company and something's not working, it's great to get honest feedback, isn't it? Because when you get feedback, whether it's constructive criticism or not, that is how you grow and you learn and develop. So I went to some of my peers and I said to a few people, this networking lark, it's not serving me, I'm not getting any business, or am I doing something wrong? And they said, yes, you're giving it the hard sell. I said, yeah, but I've got to hit my targets. They give me these monthly targets. You're only as good as last month's sale in a sales environment. And I, I said, well, I've got, to do, I've got to hit my targets. And they said, you're doing it all wrong. Networking is about building relationships. 
getting people to know you, like you, and trust you, and the business will follow. So I thought, oh my God, what a cringe I've been. So I started to learn how to network in the right way. And I did start to do okay. So I analyzed how well I'd done from networking. And from month four, from getting no business, to month 12, guess how much business I sold? 95,000 pounds worth of business. And I thought to myself, wow, this is powerful stuff. So I set up my own business in networking. Some of you who are in the room today, you might remember the Remington Steel advert. Remember he's selling the razor blades and he says, uh, the razor, and he said, I love the product so much, I bought the company. Well, I fell in love with networking. But what I wanted to do was to inspire other people and help other people with what I got wrong. So I do like to share my story of how I got it wrong, but I'm now gonna tell you what I believe is the way forward to build your network for your success. So I too have an acronym, networking. So N stands for new connections. How many of you in the room are introverts where you hate walking into a room full of people or you don't want the attention on you and you absolutely cringe and think, oh my God, I can't walk into that room. You don't have to put your hands up, but I'm sure there's some of you in the audience that feel that way. Thank you. Nice to see that you've shared that. Well, the thing is, what you've got to think of as an introvert, and I love to share this story. I talk to a lot of introverts, and there's so many entrepreneurs who are so super successful. Sir Richard Branson, he's an introvert, would you believe? I know you see him dive off buildings and fly in his planes and doing all these surf kiting, but he's an introvert, but he's still super successful. But what I always say with an introvert is think of this and flip your mindset from rather than going into a room and dreading the thought of walking into that room with all the eyeballs on you, you have a lot of value to give. You know your stuff. So think of it as your duty to pass on that knowledge, to transfer those skills and knowledge to other people, because you have a lot of value to give. And when you flip your mindset to change that, it's amazing you will feel so much better from that because we all have to get out of our comfort zones to get into the zone to become more successful. So when you see a new connection, don't think of it as, oh my God, you know, I'm gonna walk up to somebody, I don't know them. You never know what opportunity is gonna come from that. So never judge a book by its cover. So new connections, you must always think and be open to opportunities. So that's N for new connections. E is for enthusiasm. Imagine if I stood on the stage today and said to you, I don't like networking, but I run a networking company. You've got to be enthusiastic about your own business. Positivity breeds positivity. Success breeds success. People don't want to be around negative people. I call them the neggy Noras. You want to be surrounded by good people. So be enthusiastic, be supportive, be successful, and be positive. So you have to be enthusiastic about your own products and services because why would anyone want to buy off you if you're droning on, you're not enthusiastic about your own business and you're not showing that you want to help people. But if you do want to help people and you want to share your views and what, you, what values you can give, people will be attracted to you. T stands for trust. If you don't have the trust, you don't have the relationship. And if you don't have the relationship, you don't have the trust, right? So when you start to be trusting, so many more opportunities will come. So to give you an example, I think Ken, Kevin mentioned that I'm a big ideas role model. Imagine if they book me to speak at an event, to talk to a load of students, and I don't turn up. What's that gonna do? It's gonna make me become unreliable. People are not gonna start to trust you. So you've always got to think to yourself, what do people say about you when you're not in the room? You want people to start to say good things, positive things that they can trust you with because that's when other opportunities will flourish. So T is for trust and I cannot stress it enough. When you get the trust, it's amazing what opportunities will happen. W is for warmth. And what I mean by warmth, I'll give you an example, I, I'll, I'll tell you a story 
I went to the Vale Resort to a charity event one evening, and I could see there was a lady stood on her own. And you could see she was feeling uncomfortable because she was stood on her own. So she was probably more than likely an introvert because she, was in her, she wasn't in her comfort zone. I went up to her and I said, it's Helen, isn't it? And she said, yes. And she had a super company. I knew who she was and I'd never met her before. And I said, I can see you're on your own. Would you like me to introduce you to a group of people? And she said, oh, that would be amazing. And you could see from her body language that she started to relax, her shoulders dropped, and she was feeling a bit more relaxed. You can usually tell from somebody's body language if they're feeling relaxed or not. So I said, come over, and I'll introduce you to some people, and she said, amazing. So 10 minutes went by, and she came over to me after 10 minutes, and she said, I've got to go now. She said, because my guests have arrived. She'd booked a table of 10 for some guests, and they'd started arriving, and she needed to welcome them. She said, can I take your card? So another little tip. Always take your business card wherever you go because you never know who you're going to bump into. So I gave her my card. Another little tip. I said, can I have your card? And she gave it to me. And what did I do the next day? I followed up with her. And I couldn't get hold of her for two or three days. But in the end, I managed to get hold of her because I'm like a little Rottweiler. If she told me to ring her, I'm going to get hold of her. So I persisted and I got hold of her. I made an appointment to go in and see her the following week. I walked out of that appointment with 5,000 pounds. Why? Because I made her feel special. I made her feel that she wanted to belong to something or to someone. We all want to belong to something or to someone. And if you can make somebody feel special, you can make somebody feel that they belong, they will never forget you. Did I really think when I went over to talk to her and introduce her to my friends that I was going to walk away a week and a half later with 5,000 pounds? No. But it's because I made her feel special. People buy from you the way you make them feel. So I implore you, I encourage you, what can you do today, right now, to make somebody feel special, to make them feel that they belong to something or to someone because they will never ever forget you. The next one is O for opportunities. Opportunities are floating all around the universe. Not everybody sees the opportunities, not everybody identifies with the opportunities, and not everybody takes action. But when you do, again, just by talking to somebody, engaging in conversations with somebody, and asking lots of questions about them, there's opportunities everywhere. Every single one of you in the room today, right now, could connect with somebody, the person you're sat next to, that maybe you don't know. And there will be opportunities for both of you to help each other. And I had an opportunity once. I went to an event in London. I met a friend of mine who became a really good friend and my business partner, Dawn Evans. And we created a business together in the pandemic. And what came from that opportunity we recently went out to Morocco to build an entrepreneurial village for the poor women of the Atlas Mountains so that Dawn and I could leave a legacy. And that was something that we wanted to do. And we went out there and the whole village came to welcome us. That was an amazing feeling. It was probably the most humbling and gratifying experience of my life, apart from giving birth to my two children. It was amazing what opportunities came from having that conversation with Dawn, who I met many years ago in London. We became business partners. R is for reciprocal relationships. I said to you about building relationships with people, but it's creating win-win relationships. It's not all about coming into the room and taking off people. It's about helping each other. It's about creating that relationship that you can either collaborate or work together because that is when the magic starts to happen, is when you help each other. Business is never, ever about me in my business. My business is all about what I can do for others. So think to yourself when you were talking to somebody, how can you help them? Don't start talking to them and telling them all about you. It's never about you. It's what you can do for others. Business is about solving a problem or serving a need for somebody. So what can you do to solve somebody's problem? What can you do to help them grow? Because the more people that you help, 
the more people that you help to solve their problems or serve their need, your business is going to grow anyway. Does that make sense? Are you with me? So I, I, I implore you, just build reciprocal relationships with people. The next one is K for knowledge. You have to have the knowledge about what it is that you're doing in your business or in your job or in your life. What message are you going to give to people? You have to get that across before you, or get that in your head before you even go out to, and connect with anyone. What is it that you can help to solve their problems? How can you help them? How can you serve them? So have that knowledge before you even go. I is for being interested in others. Please just be interested in other people. N is for nurturing your relationships. The more you nurture your relationships, the more deep your relationships become, and it will be amazing for you what opportunities will come. And the last one is giving. You have to give before you receive. Never give with the thought of, I want something in return, because when you give, that is what relationships are about. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your attention. That is what I believe the power of human connection and building relationships is all about. Thank you very much. Oh, brilliant.